Hi, TGIF. Thanks for joining me today on uh, Fridays with Flora, and today is going to be super special. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a very special cake that was handed down to me um, by my great aunt, Marguerite. This is actually going to show you how adorable she is. My Zia Marguerite. Can you see that? And that's me a long time ago. And she lived in the Alps in France with my uncle. She actually was born in Naples. And um, we went to see her and my uncle, my great uncle, um, about 15 years ago. This is their house in the Alps. It took us a while to get there, as you can imagine. They were way up there in the mountains. And when we finally got there, we were hungry and we were tired. So of course, Zia and Zio gave us a wonderful meal. Um, delicious, simple ingredients, fresh from the mountain. This is her making um, just a simple pasta tomato sauce. And, um, you know, we all, of course, in Europe and in Italy and in France, always end the evening with coffee and some, some cognac or a little Sambuca. And she made this really simple yet delicious egg cake scented with Galliano. And it was, I don't know if it was the atmosphere or um, the, the Galliano, I don't, I don't know, but it was, it was delicious. And um, I begged her for the recipe and she gave it to me. And she told me actually that my, my grandmother, who was her best friend um, and evidently was how she met my uncle, um, was because she was my grandmother's best friend. And so my grandmother hooked her up with my uncle, so that's kind of cute. Um, she said that my grandmother also made this cake all the time, so I don't know if, you know, the, the flavor resonated with me in some way because it, it, it felt familiar, I don't know. But um, I'm going to make it today. I'm going to show you how to make it. Um, I've had a few tries at it because the original recipe was all in grams, as you can imagine. Um, she was up in the mountains, so uh, the temperature of the oven, the leavening was had to be changed and finessed here in America. Um, and also, they use in France a single acting baking soda called Alsa. And it's 15 years ago, it was very difficult to get here. So um, now with the digital revolution and Amazon, you can easily get an eight pack on Amazon very easily. So um, you're gonna be using a single acting baking soda. You can buy Alsa also in Asian uh, supermarkets. And um, there's another single acting baking soda, baking powder, sorry, baking powder. Um, I think it's called Dr. Odeker, possibly. I think there's only two that you can get here. Um, but if you can't find Alsa, if you're in a remote location in the country, you can order it on Amazon and, and get it in a couple days. You can use Prime, so that's kind of awesome. And uh, I was able to finesse the recipe and, and I'll be able to share it with you. Very special um, generational dessert. Um, so join me in the kitchen and we'll get baking. Okay, so the idea of this cake is it's all in one bowl. So this is gonna be our bowl where all the action happens. And it's generally a very simple like egg milk cake with a very European flavor, meaning it's not too sweet and kind of has a rustic quality. So we're gonna start with four eggs. And we're gonna give that a quick beat with the mixer. Now we want to add some sugar to those eggs, about a cup's worth. You want to mix this till it's thick and it's got a nice, um, like lemony yellow color. So I'm going to go just a little bit more. Okay, next we add milk. Now it's up to you if you want to cut your fat down, make it a little healthier. You can do a low fat milk. 
I'm gonna do a whole milk because I can guarantee you my Aunt Marguerite in those mountains did not do any 2% or low-fat milk. <laughs> so. some of the um, kind of the richness in the fat in the cake. Also, we need to put a little bit of oil. Um, a vegetable oil or a canola oil is going to work just fine. And you're not doing too much. You're just going to do two tablespoons. you're going to need and this is kind of the magic ingredient if you will and is what's going to really make the European the European flavor and the European cake that we're kind of looking for is a little bit of Galliano. Galliano is a liqueur I don't know if you've ever tried it um, actually on my blog um, I've kind of recreated it using um, some citrus and some um, herbs and garden flowers in the back so if you want to try making it yourself, definitely go to the blog and look up um, making Galliano. The real Galliano is kind of top secret how many herbs and florals are in here. Um, you can also use another liqueur my Aunt Marguerite told me, which is Strega, which is another um, herbal liqueur. This one is really yummy, and I would say make sure you have enough for a little sip for yourself. Either after you're done baking or when you're enjoying the cake. It's really yummy. It's got a nice honey flavor. It's got some herbal and floral notes to it um, and really gives this cake the character that it needs. So with that, you're going to add a little bit of salt, just a pinch. The other unique thing about this cake is not vanilla extract, but it uses vanilla powder. Now, now from what I've researched, definitely want to use powder when there's a lot of liquid in the cake. Um, it's also a little bit more intense flavor. This, these are Madagascar bourbon vanilla powder. That's what this is. So um, you need two teaspoons. Can you try vanilla extract with it? Sure. I'm just trying to match what my Aunt Marguerite did. At this point, now you're going to mix it really well. Now at this point, it's time for the dry ingredients. And my, my Zia said, some extra liquid in here. Um, to do this by eye, but generally for notes, say one and a half to two cups of flour. I can tell you when I've made this cake, I usually end up using two. And I'll show you kind of the gradual progression here as to why. So here's one and a half. And you can see there's a lot of liquid. This is kind of a, a pretty wet cake. Now on low, incorporate this and don't overdo it. I'm going to stop it there. You can see it's still kind of soupy, which is why I go for the extra half. My guess is when you're in the Alsace Mountains and you're using milk from amazing cows there with full butter fat, I'm sure the milk is probably thicker. So maybe you don't need as much flour. So that's the extra half cup. So we're at two cups of flour. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm gonna pause for a minute. You can see as I'm mixing it, it's starting to look more, um, more like a cake batter. It's thickening up. It, there's some tension between the batter and my mixer. I'm gonna take a spatula and scrape the sides. And my aunt told me, and she was very surprised that I was very excited about this cake, because in her mind, this is like a simple, basic, one, two, three, put it all in a bowl, don't make much of a mess, and you got something good. So, mix some more. Okay, so the final phase of this cake is the leavening, and this is what I was talking about, Elsa. Um, this is the baking powder in France, and you can find it here in select stores. I'm telling you, just get it on Amazon, it worked out great. Um, what is the unique thing about this? It is um, single acting baking powder versus double. A lot of our American baking powder is double acting, which means it reacts to the moisture and the heat where this reacts with liquid. And this is a very liquidy cake also, which is why you put this in at the very end. Because you don't want things moving too fast before you get it in your baking pan. Um, anyway, we need two tablespoons of this salsa. Now, because everything is in different measurements, I'm just going to use an old-fashioned tablespoon, which looks like, honestly, it's one packet. So that means pretty much two packets of Elsa. Give it a quick mix and also preheat your oven to 350. The batter's done. I'm going to grab my pan. You're going to need a pan with some thicker sides. I'm going to use my spring form pan. You can see that I sprayed it down with some baking spray. Um, I'm just going to pour that in. My oven's ready at 350. My mother called this cake Cassettiera. Also, I'm going to really butcher the pronunciation of what my aunt called it, Bastin Bern. I don't, I don't know what that means actually, but um, anyway, this is ready to go. I'm going to put it in the oven and I'm going to check it at about 20 minutes. And it usually takes about 35 to 40 minutes. What you're looking for is um, the center to kind of spring back to the touch, uh, toothpick coming out clean, you know, the usual suspects, if you will. Nice golden top. So let's get it in there. Okay, the cake is about to come out. I'm gonna get a cooling rack. All right, there she is. Mm. Too bad you guys can't smell what's happening here. So it springs back to the touch. It took about 35 minutes. So we're gonna let this sit and cool down for about 10 and then I'm gonna unclip the sides um, to let it cool down a little bit more. 
All right, it's been 10 minutes. I'm gonna take just a dull um, butter knife and just gently run it through the sides just to make sure it's not, and while it's cooling, you know, it does naturally, I don't know if you can see, it kind of bounces away from the side anyway as it cools down, it retracts, but you want a nice pretty side when you serve it. And there you are. Now it can cool down even quicker. Now you can serve it slightly warm with maybe a little bit of vanilla ice cream. Um, I'm gonna cool it down and then put some really pretty powdered sugar sprinkled on top and serve it. Italians like to have this with a nice espresso. So get your cafetiera ready and get some espresso brewing because this is gonna be some good eating. Cake is nice and cool. Got our cake plate. Move it to the cake plate. And all I need is a light sprinkling of powdered sugar, even if that. You could get fancier and you know do a do a drizzle, maybe with a little bit of galliano. But if you've got guests that are, I don't know, sensitive to alcohol, you might not want to do that. Beautiful. Zia Marguerite would be happy. Let's have a bite. I decided to take it outside to enjoy. Spongy and yummy. Well, that concludes Fridays with Flora. Grab an espresso and enjoy your Friday. And this Casetera cake in honor of my Aunt Marguerite. Have a great Friday, enjoy the weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye!